Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 60 of Direwolf20's Let's Play. Uh, as you can see, just getting situated in my house again. Uh, I haven't been back here pretty much since episode 57 when I started working on my Rube Goldberg machine and I decided to come check in on here. Um, I was back every now and then just to move some red matter out of here. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot stored up here, but because we told our supplier pipe to only keep uh, 64 red matter and it's not pulling any more out of the condensers up there, but that's okay. Uh, one of the things I want to do early on in today's episode, after I eat a cookie, or two, or three, is probably get started on some uh, uses for all this crazy red matter that I'm producing now. So let's take, I don't know, half a stack here and throw it into our antimatter relay. And we can charge up our client star with it. Or if you want, as many people have suggested, I could just throw my client star in here and charge it up like so directly and quickly with the transmutation table. That works just fine. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is grab one of these Klein Star Fears and uh, burn up some more red matter and get a third. And finally, a fourth. Woot. And uh, if we combine in our crafting table here our Klein Star Fears, we get a Klein Star Sphere. Cool. And the Klein Star Sphere is uh, pretty powerful, and as you can see, it's also got a good amount of EMC stored in it already because I had a small amount in my Klein Star Fears. So now I've got this Klein Star Sphere, and this holds a lot of EMC, no joke. Let's uh, dump a good amount in there. I just put two and a half million in, and you can see it's barely charged up at all. Uh, so why don't we grab another half stack of these guys and see what kind of juice we can supply this thing up to. Uh, Yep, lots and lots of EMC. We've already got up to 9 million, and we aren't even full. So this thing definitely holds a lot. Uh, so that's a nice upgrade to my Klein Star. Going to make it a lot easier for me to store EMC and make all kinds of cool stuff with it. And since I've got all this EMC just hanging around, why don't I reach in here, and since my transmutation table now knows about the Klein Star Sphere, I'm going to create one more of those. Whoa, that's a lot of EMC required. But let's go ahead and grab... Some more red matter. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to charge this guy up some more. So let's see what we can do in here. Oh yeah, that's a lot of EMC. Uh, you can see it holds just a little shy of uh, a lot. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull out three of these Klein Star Spheres. And combine them for the final version of my Klein Star. The Klein Star Omega. This guy holds a ridiculous amount of EMC. So where the Klein Star Sphere could hold about 12.8 million EMC, the Klein Star Omega can hold 51.2 million EMC. That is a lot of EMC. Um, so let's get our red matter out of here and uh, see what happens. What should happen is a bunch of red matter should start getting pulled out of uh, all the collectors that have been storing it up and try and get me back up to the point where I have 64 in there again. Yep, only 32, 33. So it looks like I've drained all my uh, collectors, which is fine. And I've got a good amount of red matter here, another stack. So that's neat. Um, got my Klein Star Omega, which has mm, 3 million in, and you can barely see the meter bar on there. And we just taught our transmutation table about the Klein Star Omega. So remember, that guy's worth 51, or can store 51 million EMC. Pretty cool. Oh, and looks like we just got up to 61 red matter in here, so I'm going to clear that out and make sure that uh, all my supplier pipes trigger. Uh, remember, there's a few second delay between the supplier pipes, uh, you know, requesting items, but I think we've pretty much cleaned out the system, and we've now got a full, almost full, two stacks. All right, so let's get to crafting now that we have all these awesome little goodies that we've collected. I'm going to go grab out of my chests here some iron... And I'm probably going to need a few more of those, actually. I'm going to need some flint while I'm at it. And that should be in one of these two chests on the end. And I'll need some coal, as a matter of fact. Uh, because I think this is the easiest way for me to craft what I want to craft. So if I take four pieces of coal in a crafting table, I'll get some alchemical coal. Cool. And I have to place my Philosopher's Stone back in every time because of the new uh, functionality that it provides. That's fine. There we go. And four alchemical coal in here together will provide me with some Mobius fuel. That's what I'm going to need. 
Awesome. Looking good. While I'm at it, I'm going to request out of this guy. Just two dark matter. Should be good. And then let's get to crafting. So if I take four of these with my flint. There we go. Flint and steel. And I'm going to need another ring because this is a ring that I'm making here. There we go, we've got the Ring of Ignition. Uh, this guy is all about fire. Let's go outside and play with him a little bit, huh? So the Ring of Ignition, uh, when you left click with him, will shoot this awesome little projectile out. Well, the left clicked effect is supposed to start some fire, but it doesn't look like it's working. So let's charge it up and right click and we get some fire on the ground. Uh, the power of the charge will determine how far the fire goes. I think it goes all the way up to 30 blocks if you charge all the way up. So, uh, <laughs> pretty fun. Sorry, buddy. And, uh, yeah, so that's what the Ring of Ignition is all about. Pretty much, you know, dealing with fire. You're also immune to fire whenever you're, uh, you know, near it. And it'll put out fire within a 3x3 three three area. So if you charge this guy up and light stuff on fire and just walk towards it, it'll kind of clear it away for you. So that's pretty cool. Immune to fire. And then if you press G with it active, it'll start lighting fires all around you in a pretty much uh, wide area circle. So that's pretty neat. So a big area nearby will be lit up with flames. Ha ha ha. Awesome. You could wreak some serious havoc with this ring. But that's what the Ring of Ignition is all about. But I didn't really craft this thing for, uh, you know, just everyday use, obviously. Not a whole lot of use for starting fires all over the place. So let's go back to our base and uh, craft up the next item that I was really using this for. So you'll note that we have quite a few rings here. And uh, just like the Red Matter Morning Star here, if we grabbed a few pieces of Red Matter... I think just five is all I'll need. And place them in a crafting table with our Swift Wolf's Ring, our Ring of Ignition, our Zero Ring, that creates the snowballs, and our Harvest Goddess Band, and then some red matter in here. We get the Ring of Arcana. Dun dun dun. This guy's pretty much a combination of all the rings that are available. And you can see a couple of the rings here didn't get used up. I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but uh, they didn't, so oh well. And the Ring of Arcana is pretty cool. It's pretty much a combination of all the different rings available and you can change the mode that it is by pressing C. Uh, so let's give this guy a whirl. First off you can double tap space regardless of what mode you're in and you can fly around. So that's pretty nice. Has the same flight characteristics as the Swift Wolf's ring and the Swift Wolf is yellow so you can right click in yellow mode and still shoot that little projectile that whisks enemies away or sheep for that matter. And uh, pressing G with this mode on, just like the Swift Wolf, uh, will repel enemies, not um, friendly NPCs like sheep, but enemies like zombies and skeletons and whatnot. Let's go see if there's any hanging out in the forest. Probably not. So yeah, that's pretty much what this ring does in yellow mode. Now if we switch it over to the green mode, this is your Harvest Goddess Band. So, activating it will automatically harvest nearby stuff, and it works just like the Harvest Goddess Band in that it helps to, uh, you know, cause things to grow and whatnot. Uh, the blue mode is your zero ring, so right-clicking or uh, pressing R, for that matter, will cause the snow to land on the ground, and G, activating it, will cause snow to appear all around you. And again, you can double tap space in any mode and you'll be in good shape. And finally, you've got this mode here, which works just like the Ring of Ignition. Activating with G, lights fires all over the place. This one will not automatically put fires out, so keep that in mind. But it will keep you immune from fire, and it'll keep you immune from fire in any mode. So you don't have to be in uh, either of those modes. So you can see we're not taking any fire damage, even though my ever my Vulcanite amulet is not on my hotbar. This will also protect you from lava. So just by having this ring on your hotbar, you can pretty much always fly and always be immune to lava and be in pretty good shape. Um, but you do need it on your hotbar, of course. You can't just use it without it in your hotbar. 
So that's the Ring of Arcana, a very powerful but a lot of fun ring. And what I'm going to start doing is taking out all the red matter out of this chest and dumping it directly into my client star Omega. So let's do that now. Oh yeah, look at that, 27 million EMC. That is, uh, that's a lot of EMC, isn't it? And we're collecting a few more red matter because my chest was full and the red matter being produced by my little system up there. Um, I'm starting to wonder if I need more of this stuff. <laughs> I'm getting a little red matter greedy right now, aren't I? Probably. And another equivalent exchange item that I've been meaning to produce, and now that I have a lot of red matter to do it, I'm going to. Let's craft up using a piece of lapis in the middle and some books. And two red matter gives us one of the three stones that are available in equivalent exchange, the mind stone. This guy is going to store all the experience I have. Notice that I'm already at level 30 on my experience bar. If I activate this with G, it's going to start draining the experience bar all the way down to zero. And if I press G again, it's now stored in the mind stone all my experience. And I can right click with this guy to get one level at a time back and keep right clicking to get all the way back up to 30 and then finally get my experience back to where it was. But G again to suck it all back up. So this is nice a little bit of a way to store your experience and not lose it. So I'm gonna keep this in my uh, yellow bag probably and every now and then keep it charged up and then maybe at some point I'll wind up doing something with my experience. I should probably enchant something somewhere, shouldn't I? Yeah, probably. We'll see. I don't know if I can enchant this red matter item. We'll find out. Now you guys note that I did use my uh, builder here on the uh, little Rube Goldberg machine. So I had to go ahead and create a new one. And what I'm going to do is probably extend this wall out and try and expand my uh, creation of red matter. I really want to get like a silly amount of this stuff and I still don't have enough. So I'm going to expand this wall and maybe knock off in this direction. So let's grab our yellow bag I think it's in. Yep, there's my destruction catalyst and just take this wall down. That looks good. Sweet. And I'm going to just charge this guy up a level or two. Maybe one more. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Try to keep my Ring of Arcana on my hotbar, but I usually fail. Nice. And I can just deposit all this junk in here. I don't need to worry too much about it. Cool. I'm going to expand this wall just a little bit and maybe come right back once I have this room nice and big. All right, so I'm going to need a bit more paper for what I'm about to build. So why don't I get that ready? And as you can see, my room's pretty well done over here. Um, let's tag a, snag a stack of paper there. So yeah, that looks like a pretty decent sized room built out. All looks good. And uh, what I'm going to build now, I'm going to need some lappies for this. So let's grab, I think I'm going to need eight of them. And I'm going to build like so. Eight blueprints. Holy cow, that's a lot of blueprints, Direwolf. What do you need all that for? Don't worry, I got stuff in mind. Um, no, I'm not actually building eight blueprints worth of stuff. What I'm actually building is taking three books and creating a bookshelf. Uh, what's the recipe for this guy? Is it this way? Yeah, there we go. A bookshelf. Cool. And if you place with that bookshelf with blueprints all around it, you get what's called a blueprint library. This thing is actually pretty neat. And I'm going to store them, oh, I don't know, like how about well, somewhere in here, maybe uh, back in the corner? Sure. That's a nice spot for it. So, you can use your blueprint library to record what you have stored on your blueprints and use them in other games. Uh, so if you have another world save or something, that's all well and good. All you have to do is come in here with your blueprint. So here's my EMC collector blueprint that I recorded earlier. I'm going to place it in this slot. And what it's going to do is it's going to encode it over here on the left into my blueprint library. Now I've got this nifty little blueprint. And uh, what I can do now is save out of the game and log into my test world. And you can see some of uh, the testing contraptions that I was doing for my uh, 
which we'll call it my Rube Goldberg machine. And if I were to go into my test world here, put on cheat mode, and get my blueprint library out and place it down on the ground, I've now got my EMC collector in my blueprint library. And uh, if I place a blueprint in there and make sure to highlight EMC collector, it's going to record it. Cool. So now I can build my EMC collector in my test world, which is what I'm going to do now because there's a couple things I want to test before proceeding. So I'll meet you guys back in my Let's Play world in a few minutes. Alright, so back in my main world here, and I'm going to go ahead and craft up using uh, some blueprints. Or no, not a blueprint, sorry. I need a lapis. I knew it was blue, whatever I needed. There we go. Another blank blueprint is what I'm going to craft. There we go. And you'll note that in my blueprint box now, I've got an upside down EMC. And I'm just going to encode that onto this blank blueprint. It's something that I built in my test world um, just to ch check out how to send the blueprints back and forth. But I'm going to craft this upside down EMC. And basically what it is, is this exact design, but upside down. And it's going to go into the floor right down here, actually. So what I'm thinking is if I dig down one two, three, four, and, uh, you know, maybe drop down a builder right here. And I want to make sure that it's facing the right direction, so maybe I should do this. There, that looks better. And place my upside down EMC. It should pretty much map out around here. So you can see that's where it's going to map out its little area. Cool. Um, now I'm debating if I want to move this over a little bit. If I move it over one block, it'll be more centered. I think that's probably a good idea. So let's get this out of here. And place it here, for example. And now I'll place my upside down EMC right like that. And that looks a little bit better, I think, don't you guys? Yeah, I think so. And then it'll be in line with the stuff on the roof. So that looks neat. Um, now give me a minute here because I just want to make sure that everything I build is nice and symmetrical. And you know what? I don't think it is because uh, this is where I'm thinking my uh, condenser is going to wind up. And if I look straight up, that's right there. Um, so that's not where I wanted to go. I want it to be one more forward. So let's move this guy forward one block. So get this out of here. There we go. Upside down EMC collector. That should be good. And you can see I'm just knocking off the marble here. Sweet. So let's go ahead and build this guy real quick and see what happens. So all I need is 17 collectors, 5 Mark III relays, and an energy condenser. Let's give it a shot. Uh, where's my Klein Star? 17, Mark III. 5 antimatter relays, but not Mark II. Mark III. Where's my Mark III antimatter relays? There they are. And one energy condenser. Cool. And I barely put a dent in my Klein Star's EMC storage. So all I gotta do is place these guys in here like so. And get out of my green bag. Do I have any item teleport pipes? Probably not. So get a redstone here and convert this item teleport into a power teleport. And temporarily, again, I'm just going to pick some random frequency. Again, it's temporary, so it's no big deal. Frequency 6 can receive true. Hooray, we've got energy flowing. And our robot here should automatically clear out the area for us. And you can see the color is blue, meaning he's running at full speed. Wahaha. Nice. And now he should start clearing out the last line. Yeah, that's looking good. And now start planting down all the stuff that I told him to build. Oh, looking good. Perfect. And this guy should plant down the energy collector. Yes. Cool. The condenser's in there. Nice. Exactly what I wanted to see happen. So let me clean up the flooring and pick these items back up. And I'll be right back. 
Now here's an interesting fact about these things, is as many people have commented, and I think I've mentioned in the past, these guys will produce their own light level. So um, it doesn't matter if it's dark or bright in this room, it's not a big deal, they'll produce their own light. The only thing is you can't place a block on top of it. That will prevent the light level from being generated, and uh, that would not be cool. So let's put something that won't block light. Glass. Sounds good, right? Sweet. That's a pretty nice looking design. And uh, everything should be running at full power here, so we shouldn't have any issues. And we can even test this by going down here and checking that all this stuff is bright. There's no darkened areas. Um, so yeah, everything's looking pretty good. I'm pleased. How about you guys? Yep. So we'll put our marble back right there. And maybe even put another one down in a minute, but for now that looks pretty solid. I might want to build one up on the roof now. Let's do that. So I'm going to go grab my builder and place him down up here wherever I think it's going to work. So uh, builder, I think it was like five or six-ish up. So I think it wants to be maybe back here. I just want to make sure this thing's oriented properly. And in here I'll put my normal EMC collector blueprint. And that's going to build it out like here. Yeah, I think it needs to be forward one more, right? Yeah, probably. It's not looking right. Let me get them situated, oriented properly, and I'll be right back. Yeah, that looks pretty solid. Uh, so as a hint to all you guys out there planning to build with these builders, remember what direction and what orientation you put your template table when you record your template, because otherwise sometimes funny things happen. So let's go get another set of these guys with our client star Omega. 17, 5, and 1. And again, not much of a dent placed in my client star. So that's a good sign. It means I'm going to be able to build a lot of these guys going forward in a bit. And I'm going to need to do the power thing here in a minute. And it looks like it's getting dark out. So why don't I wait till morning to do this so you guys can see it in the light. All right, here we go again with the power teleport pipes. I don't have glowstone in there. I'm not going to worry about it right now. I might manually place it there later. But for now, it's not a big deal. So can receive true. Should start building. Sweet. Gotta love watching that little robot build stuff, isn't it so cool? It definitely is. I think I'm gonna need to do some more blueprint stuff in the near future, because I mean, it's just awesome to watch. And remember, because of this blueprint, I think it's because the energy condenser in this blueprint had some EMC storage in it or something funny in there that was basically uh, preventing it from uh, duplicating properly. So I'm gonna pick these items up and manually place the energy storage uh, condenser, ideally. So uh, don't have to worry about glowstone up there, but I'll probably wind up placing it up there manually just to make things look nice. But for now, let's get back downstairs. Do I have any smooth stone on me? Hooray, I do. Sweet. So now we've got these two guys right here and here, and we can get our energy condensers right in there. Nice. So looks like we've got them properly situated. Why don't I get a couple pieces of red matter, already producing quite a bit, and uh, put them in our target slot. Nice. I like it. Now to set up the logistics system. Okay, so all we should really need in this room here is something like this. What I'm thinking is grab some basic logistics pipes and bump them up to provider pipes, because we want to provide out of these chests here. Place one here and one here. These guys will provide. And then if we run down like so, hmm, where do I want this to go? Good question. Hmm, give me a minute to think about this. All right, let's try maybe like this. If I went with sand pipes, there they are. Place them like so and ran straight down here. And where'd that block go? I don't know, but we'll fix it now. And then we wanted to run straight over there. So let's do sand here. That looks good. And then uh, the rest of the way. And we should probably, because this is going to be an intersection, have a basic logistics pipe right over there. So that looks good. Sweet. That's already working. Oh wait, 
It's working the wrong way. <laughs> what happened? Yep, that's right. It pulled out that guy. So that is not cool. Let's break this piece off for now. Grab back two of our red matter and place them back in our chest. Remember, this is an important piece of this component here. Uh, get this guy off here too and go with uh, red matter here. So remember, we want to get our wrench out of our green bag, which is probably in here somewhere. There it is. And tell this guy to leave the first stack. So there's what happens if you don't tell it to leave the first stack. And uh, the same thing down here. Leave first stack. And then connect this logistics pipe up. And we should see any moment now some uh, red matter getting sucked into the system. It's probably going to take a minute for it to go, but that's okay. Looking good. So I think that's a pretty solid addition. And I'm planning to place another set here and here and maybe even further along. But uh, this way now I can really start expanding the way that this uh, red matter production occurs. And I might even build some into the walls here as well. That might get a little ridiculous, but a lot of fun. So uh, I'll be back in a little bit to start building some more. So let's see. Hey, there we go. Working perfectly. And what the heck, while I'm at it, I might as well increase production another way. I'm going to go ahead and pull out, uh, let's see, I'm going to need four of you and five of you. And probably four of these guys. That should do it. And with my crafting table, I'm going to craft a new watch of flowing time. So just like this. Got the clock in there. And some obsidian, I want to say. Maybe goes this way. Glowstone here with dark matter in the corners. Hey, there's a watch. And then uh, dark matter blocks and red matter get me a new pedestal. Not bad. Place that guy there with the watch on it. And boom, I've now got three watches burning up causing this stuff to run even faster now. Uh, I think somebody did the math and determined that about 35 watches are required to get the maximum speed boost, which is 10 times. So uh, these things would be running 10 times faster if I got 35 watches. Don't really expect to do that during this season, but uh, you never know. I wouldn't count on it though. I'm gonna go ahead and burn this stuff up and put it directly into my client star. There we go, nice. 13 million EMC. Gotta love it. Uh, I'll come back next episode, probably, and maybe expand this room, maybe work on some more cool stuff. I am going to get rid of these torches. These were just here as a temporary. Um, I do want to play more with the builder. I think there's a lot of potential there. There's some really cool stuff that I haven't gotten into with the uh, Buildcraft Builder just yet, and I do want to start checking that out. As you can see, my uh, Buildcraft room is still plugging along pretty well here. I've gone ahead and just left this lever pushed down, and uh, all the fuel is going into my combustion engines. And any fuel that does get pulled out of these tanks is quickly replaced by uh, this process. It's automatically refilling this fuel tank here, because uh, this machine runs as soon as there's room in these fuel tanks. And the refineries are nice and full, as you can see. And anytime a small amount of fuel is used, the refinery ticks on, processes a little bit, and then turns off again automatically. So my buildcraft room is humming along rather nicely. And let's go check on our apiaries real quick. Uh, you can see here's uh, where I had my Meadows Steadfast Hybrid combination. I did mention to you guys I was uh, looking at trying to get another Steadfast Queen, but uh, I'm not too concerned about it. How's this process working out for me? Mm, still have a Steadfast Queen here. She's still doing her thing. That's cool. And uh, I would like to eventually get that purebred industrial princess and queen, but eh, still no luck with that. Oh well, what can you do? I'll just go with a Meadows Steadfast combo here and see if I get lucky. Yep, Unwary Diligent, no luck. Hey, Steadfast Queen, I did get lucky here. Nice. So I got a purebred Steadfast, that's cool. And these guys are still the Sinisters processing, and this one's empty because that's where I went and got the uh, queen from. So lots of good stuff going on here. Let's head down to our underground room because uh, my quantum legs just ran out of juice. Uh, I usually don't do this one on camera, but I do want to check downstairs and see how my MFSU downstairs is making out. So uh, 
barely any uh, lava in here. It looks like we're running a little bit low. But our fuel is pretty full, so that's a good sign. Unfortunately, I'm about to drain the MFSU of all its power by charging up my legs and my boots. So, yeah, looking good. So I think this feels like a pretty good wrapping up point for episode 60. Hope you guys enjoyed checking it out. I'm going to go ahead and do the world download as usual at this point. I'll make sure to empty my alchemy bags into those chests upstairs like I did in episode 50. And then uh, go ahead and upload this for you all. Hope you guys enjoy the season so far. Remember, I'm getting pretty close to wrapping up this season. Um, I'm not exactly sure what number I'm going to end on. It really depends on when all the mods are ready. As of the time of this recording, I've currently got, um, I think, Equivalent Exchange updated today. And uh, Industrial Craft is pretty close. I have a beta version of that. And uh, it'll probably be released rather soon. There's still a few other mods I'm waiting on. And uh, hopefully... It'll be pretty soon. And uh, like I said, I've got a couple cool things planned for Season 4. I have some challenges, and I have a couple new mods that I've never used before, so I can't wait to start playing with them and showing you guys what all these other mods are about. So uh, stay tuned for Season 4, but for now, not wrapping up Season 3 just yet. Still a few more things I want to get to before I end this season. So uh, catch me next time in Episode 61. Take it easy, everybody.